three of my uh, book dimension laps and um and uh, we're also I'm also running a contest for all six books in the series if you can answer the question at the end in the beginning of each broadcast and um, and whoever gets uh, and you'll get a chance to win all six of my books and I'll uh, be picking the one who uh, gets the most questions right so um, so we'll be doing that again tonight. And um, I have a special right now for these two books. For Dimension Lapse. Well, I don't have the other book right with me. But Dimension Lapse and the second one in the series, Return to Doomsday. You can get both books for $13. Uh, you're getting um, the second book for for um, $4 off. So um, I have that deal as well. At the end of this month, I'll be um, at uh, uh, Finger Lakes Con at the, the Lakefront Hotel in Geneva from uh, 10 to 5 on Saturday, or 10 to 6 on Saturday, and 10 to 5 on Sunday, on the 26th and 27th. I'll be there, so um, hope to see you there, so... Without further ado, we'll begin with the book. Um, kind of, kind of a uh, summary of where we left off. Jeff was being chased by uh, enemy craft, and he had to land. He was running out of oxygen. He had to land on a nearby world, which was called Belar, and um, he ended up landing on uh, uh, the planet, and there was. A dome inside on the planet where where this insectoid lived insectoids lived they were called the Balerians uh, and he got to meet them and that's where we left off so um, we'll start from there and tonight's question I'll ask it at the beginning and the end from now on because uh, you'll if I ask it at the beginning you'll have a chance to Listen for the answer. When you get the answer, you can write it down in the comments, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, uh, the uh, question tonight is: What is the weapon called that Zarkon reveals to Jeff? Okay, the weapon that he reveals to him. What? What? It, what's the name of it? Okay. So, all right. So we'll start on chapter three. I have to take them off and see better. Um, Jeff followed Zarkon to the end of a long oval shaped tunnel where he opened two doors, revealing a large room of computers. There are even more here than the Tolarian base on the island. This is our main control center, Z Zarkon replied. With our advanced technology, we can find out anything we want to know within this galaxy. Is there anything that you wish to ascertain? Where is Mars base, and how do I get there? Computer operative, a voice answered. Mars, the fourth planet around Seoul in the Milky Way galaxy, star sector 5557890, alternate universe 34677. How long will it take to get there from here, even if I was to go back to my own universe using this vessel? 359 years. 215 days, 14 hours, 27 minutes, and 42 seconds using tra transportation. I'd be happy just to see another human, Jeff sighed in disgust. He hesitated as he thought about Lori for a minute or two, missing her sweet face again. I'm sure your Lori is fine, Zarkon assured him as he read his thoughts. Would you mind not reading my mind? Jeff asked, requested a bit annoyed. Forgive me, Mr. Walker. I didn't mean to offend. Do you have another question for the computer? Yeah. How is it possible for the Tolarians to move from one dimension to the next so swiftly? I can answer that, Zarkon said to enlighten them. They have improved the device to an extent, but it's not per perfected and still highly unstable. Their vessel could be transferred to another universe 
and create a void between universes behind them, trapping any other craft in it. The ship could implode from the enormous pressure placed upon it if the wormhole collapses. The Republican, the Republic knows to how to perform this operation safely. Time and space travel are not matters to be taken lightly, which is why I came here, Jeff said. I was hoping that you could tell me how they found me so quickly. Are you aware that each of their ships has a homing device? Darkon asked. They left the room and walked down another corridor until they came to two sliding doors. They opened as Jeff turned towards them. No, he answered. Well, how come they haven't captured us yet? Maybe the device is no longer functioning, or they are waiting to see what your next move is? Who knows? At any rate, I'll have it dismantled so they can't follow you any longer. If they've lightened up at all, it's because they are toying with you. It would be best to wait to leave. The Toyarians are extremely powerful, and unless you catch them off guard, as you have in the past, they have the upper hand. You are fortunate enough to get three of their craft without being attacked. They will not let you do that again. I suggest we wait for one of their attacks on a colony. While they are vulnerable, we can disrupt them at the source, the main control center on the plant Polaria. Where is that? Jeff asked as he entered the room containing the large nuclear fusion turbines. This is our main power source, Zarkon said as he evaded the question for a moment. It manages the entire power of the space and city. It runs on three fusion reactor chambers, which are below us. This entire city can be converted into a spacecraft if there is a major disaster. You didn't answer my question. You'll find the Tolarian base at the edge of, the ga of this galaxy. It will take approximately four weeks of Mars time to get there from here, depending on where you emerge from the wormhole. Have they ever attacked this planet? No, not yet. We can be a formidable enemy when we want to be. Let's continue our tour, shall we? His appearance bothered Jeff considerably. His large protruding mandibles were clicking, but not speaking. The two large blue compound eyes staring down at him with an emptiness in them and his four long arms and claws that could break his hand with one snip. He never had a conversation with an insect before, let alone one that was able to read his thoughts, and he was uncertain if he could trust him or not. After they visited the power room, they ventured through the remainder of the complex. Completely bewildered by their architecture, everything was made of shiny silver steel and shaped in ways he never thought possible. Their city under a dome, their city under a dome, had a style of its own, totally alien to anything on Earth or Mars. He firmly believed if it was attacked, they would only sustain minimal damage by laser fire. Towards the end of his tour, Zarkon came to a room marked investigative research. They entered it, and the door shut behind them. This is why the Tolarians will not attack us, he replied as he waved his claw-like hand. In this room are some of the most devastating devices you will ever see. We don't like war, but in a universe of violent races, it becomes necessary to protect ourselves from those who mean to harm us. He walked over to two doors on the far side of the large room and pressed a button on the panel that opened them. They revealed a large 30-feet weapon pointed out into space. Its tip extended through the roof of the large dome in the ceiling, similar to a planetarium. It had several sections on the device and went into larger sections until it reached the base. Jeff gathered that this was so it could retract into itself for it to be more compact. He had no idea as to precisely what it was, but he knew it wasn't just to say hello to the neighbors. We call it the Bolorian Death Ray, the insect exclaimed. It's the only one of its kind in either of our universes. It is capable of destroying an entire planet anywhere in the galaxy, just by operating the controls in the briefing room next door. Excuse me. This fact proved to Jeff 
their intentions were not peaceful. Maybe it was just a gut feeling that Jeff was skeptical and didn't trust their rhetoric. Why would beings of peace, such as yourselves, create such a thing? Deterrence, my friend, deterrence. Life is a precious commodity. It doesn't matter if someone is constructive or destructive. They still deserve to live. Surely as humans have made mistakes on your planet, you understand that by using it, we would make a grave mistake. There is no reason to destroy the Torians until they become a serious threat. You don't consider them a serious threat? When will they become one? After they take over the half the galaxy? Until now, they have only been gaming with us, observing us. We are at a stalemate with them. But if we could get somebody on the inside, you mean to tell me the Torians have this weapon too? I've only heard rumors that they have spies here. I have no evidence yet. Is it possible that maybe you could help us with a little mission of our own? We're all outsiders to this, Jeff barked. He wanted no part of their battle with the Torians and he couldn't figure out why they wanted him of all people. We just landed here because we felt it was a safe place to land, not because, not to get involved in the intergalactic war. I understand what you're saying, but if they have stolen the plans to the death ray, it could be the end of life as we know it for all of us, Zarkon remarked. You said that you destroyed three of their ships and you obviously stole one as well. After we remove the tracking device and our own tracking system installed, it will be impossible for them to find you. It's similar to what you call a jamming device. I can't fight them alone, Jeff pleaded with the Dorian. Of course not. We will help you. Our friends will accompany you, and, and my best analyst and security crew will follow you in another craft. I would assist you myself but I have my duties here. They exited the room and started down the hallway. I am having a banquet for the Republic Committee tonight, he stated. As a spokesman for the human race, I think you should attend. Perhaps your friends would also like to attend representing their small planet. Of course, Je Jeff said. Jeff answered, we'd be honored. The two guards approached Zarkon as he saluted. Jeff felt a little uneasy about the whole situation, but after knowing a little more about, about it, he felt now he could trust them. Show our guest to his quarters and bring him anything he wants, Sarkon said. He turned to Jeff. I'm sure you're as anxious to learn about us as we are about you. There is a computer in your quarters that will be of some use to you. I will contact you when the dinner is about to begin. He nodded, following the guards to the end of the corridor till he came to the room on the right. The room wasn't very large, and the only items in it were two beds, two chairs, a small table, and a computer implanted into the wall. Dormiton approached Jeff, who waited diligently for the aliens to leave the room. Jeff held his finger to his lips and searched the room for hidden microphones or cameras. He found nothing no noticeable to the naked eye. As the Valorians exited the room and started down the hallway, the door slid shut behind them. Well, he, his amphibian friend asked, what do you think? I don't know, he answered. They seem peaceful enough. They took Miljik down to treat his burns. They said he'd be on his feet by dinner. I think we should be cautious. I know these Valerians seem peaceful, but they have instruments of violence. I've seen one of their weapons and they're just as bad as the Tolarians. It appears that they're currently at war with them, and neither side is capable of winning without destroying each other. They have a gun capable of wiping out an entire planet. I don't like it. What do you suggest we do then? We'll have to go along with them until we can find out what their motives are. We're all invited to a banquet tonight. Maybe we can get some answers there. Having not rested for a day and a half, having not rested for a day and a half, Jeff slept quite comfortably for a few hours. When he awoke, Dormiton lost himself in concentration. 
What are you thinking about, Jeff asked Yanni. What happened on Lingwert? Why did they kill our people? We didn't do anything to them. All we wanted was peace. And all they wanted was conquest. Jeff stated as he stretched and st sat up in bed. His tone was firm, but he tried to he tried to consider the amphibian's point of view. Look, Dormiton, you made a choice. You had to choose between running and making a stand. You'll soon find that most places in the universe aren't like Ling Lingwort. Sometimes you have to fight for your freedom. If you're blaming yourself for your friend's death, don't. It wasn't your fault. If you must blame someone, blame the enemies that brought this upon you. I will kill no one, and I will blame no one. There has been enough bloodshed already. We should not get involved. We're already involved, whether you like it or not. We're going to have to come up with a plan of our own. He was interrupted by the voice of the intercom calling his name. He pressed the red transmitter button. This is Walker, he answered. This is Zarkon. The banquet is to begin shortly. There are two guards outside your quarters. They will escort you to the briefing room. Thank you, Jeff answered. We will be there shortly. He turned off the transmitter and opened the door, Dormiton following behind him. The guards instructed the two inter-universal travelers to walk until they came to a large room with three tables at the center. There were ten chairs at each of them, eating utensils, plates, and glasses at each place setting. The glasses were a peculiar, uneven design he had never seen before. Zarkon was already in the room and greeted them at the door. Make yourselves comfortable, gentlemen, he said. He walked over to where their friend Miljik was, who was much better and now fully alert. Zarkon addressed the guards at the guests seated, as the guests seated themselves. Have the Republic members arrived yet? Yes, sir, one of them answered. They are on their way now. The ambassador of Zaloria refused to meet meet our advisors, however. That is unfortunate, their leader sighed, shook his head, and I was so sure that they were would be on their way to peace. They refused to believe that the Tolarians are a threat to them. Typical human characteristics. Jeff was a little offended by the remark, but tried to stay on topic of the conversation anyway. The Zalorian people are human beings, he asked. They're human beings, all right, he answered. They are primitive, sad, savage, arrogant humans. They refuse to accept policies that would only benefit them and are currently trading weapons with the Tuarians. If they refuse to listen to us, the Tuarians will take their planet. We have tried to become their allies, allies, but they accuse us of interfering. We have no other alternative than to discontinue our conferences with them. You would just let the Tolators and Tolarians evade them? Sorry, I'm getting a little tongue-tied there. <clears throat> you would just let the Tolarians invade them? Well, there is nothing else we can do. We tried deploying troops there, but it's getting so you don't even know who's fighting whom. The Republic suggests that there be no further interference, and I am willing to go along with that. Let their better ignorance be their own undoing. You can't save lives by condemning them, Jeff said. The Republic does not decide for everybody, does it? Well. Who is this? A voice interrupted. All eyes fixed upon the door, a guest who arrived, who was disturbed by his words. He was an alien, resembling a humanoid, but had long, sharp black nails at the end of his fingers. He wore no mask, so he could obviously breathe oxygen as well. He had no facial or body hair, was white in complexion, and his red eyes were narrow and black around his eyelids. Unlike Zarkon, who used thoughts to communicate, he had, spoke actual English which again surprised Jeff. A native of Zaloria, perhaps? No, Riona, Zarkon answered. This is Jeff Walker, an inhabitant of a planet called Mars. He and his friends came here in a spaceship. 
they stole from the Tuarians. He believes that they that we should defend Zeloria rather than choose not to interfere. Nonsense, the humanoid barked. We do that, we would jeopardize our own resources. They must combine their fo their forces with the Republic for their protection of the galaxy. That will not be possible if they continue to buy weapons off our enemies. I see your point, Jeff stated, but I think you should help them anyway. Perhaps if a human were to talk with them. Being human yourself, you should know that they would kill you as a, as a spy, Riona laughed. No, Mr. Walker, it would be best for you to stay out of affairs that don't concern you. Jeff was willing to cooperate, but he was growing impatient with his mind games. Zarkon invited me as a guest, Jeff said. They attacked my friend's home planet and my own as well. Not to mention that I've been chased halfway across two universes by them. And you tell me that it doesn't concern me. I'd like to know what someone is going to do about this situation. You, Rihanna sneered, shall do nothing. Zarkon was wrong to invite you to this private conference. You are not a member of the Republic. It is, it is in the Republic hands as it always will be. I suggest you leave before the other members arrive. And if I refuse? If you do anything to prevent our agenda, then you may find yourself considerably shorter, my friend. From, from his dark blue coat, it resembled a friar or a monk. He pulled out a laser and pointed it at Jeff. The guards prevented the other guests from entering, the, entering during the incident. Is this your idea of peace? Jeff asked as he watched the laser in his hand close. Two guards' headbands glowed brightly red as they approached him. Jeff stared at Zarkon in distrust, but he just waved his forearms as if he knew nothing of Rihanna's actions. Zarkon, Rioni yelled in anger. You are a fool to, by, for allowing these intruders here. It's obvious they were sent by the Zalorians and our spies. I'm holding you personally responsible for this outrage. You will pay the penalty of death for the, your treason. He pointed his gun towards the insect, but Jeff kicked it from his hand, knocking it to the floor. Before he was able to grab it, Riona waved his arm and sent Jeff across the room against the far wall. Riona held open his hand, and the lasers seemed to fly into it. He, the human couldn't believe what he was seeing, thinking real telekinesis was impossible. Do you really believe you can hurt me, he laughed. I have twice your physical strength, human, and five times your mental strength. You are no match for me. Guards, take this, take these intruders and President Zarkon to the brig. Tomorrow they will be brought to Centros for trial. As a senior council member, I am assuming command of this planet until further notice. It will be my personal pleasure to see you executed, Zarkon. I always knew you were a traitor to the Galactic Republic. The crowd of ambassadors were astonished to see their leader and the prisoners push through the door and down the hallway. They looked and looked to Rihanna, Riona for answers. Zarkon couldn't believe his own eyes. His own people, yeah. Zarkon couldn't believe his own people treated him this way. Now you know why I don't do audio stuff, because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> Zarkon couldn't believe his own people treated him this way. When they reached the brig, the same officer who earlier followed Zarkon's orders, now shoved him inside the room. He held his forearms out in, to his guests in sympathy. Why is it that when I question Riona's views of peace, I am punished, he asked. If I agree to help you, they accuse me of being a spy. You are no more spies than I am the leader of Teleria. Something is going on here, but I can't quite have put a finger on it, as you humans say. But in my case, that would be a claw. Doesn't feel right to me either, Jeff replied. Why doesn't the Republic want to intervene with Zoria? 
probably because Riona is right. To help them do so would be senseless. They would only turn their weapons against us. They have been siding with the Tuarians for years. How do you know that? Dormiton asked. He didn't fully understand this thing called war, but he was beginning to. Have you ever been there? Of course not, Zarkon answered. Then how do you know they're in the league with the Tuarians? Jeff asked. Maybe it's a propaganda stunt by the Republic to get your race to hate them. Maybe they have a hidden agenda that you're unaware of. That is highly unlikely, but as Zarkon replied, their job is to maintain peace, not start wars. There's always that possibility, Jeff said. We'll never know by staying in here. We have to find a way out. Jeff paced the room as he thought of an escape strategy. Zarkon and his wingworts eyed each other over carefully, still not fully trusting one another. Jeff turned to the giant insect. What are the headbands for, Jeff asked, as he watched it faintly illuminate. A weapon? No, it's my thought translator, he, he explained. It allows us to communicate, communicate with other beings, such as yourselves. It is essential that we try to open relations with all forms of life. Where do they keep the weapons here? Jeff asked, still focused on escape. There are no handheld weapons. As you are thinking, Mr. Walker, he answered. Our weapon is the mind, which in some ways can be more effective. Our spaceships, however, are armed with photonic lasers and fusion torpedoes, as yours are as well. Considering that we're all about to be executed, you can skip the formalities and just call me Jeff, the human remarked. What happens if two minds fight each other? The stronger one wins, of course. Who has the stronger mind, you or the guard? I do, but Riona is here, and if we escape, he will know. He is not Balorian. How can his mind be so strong? No, he is not, explained the insect. He is from a planet long dead. He is also the president of the Council of the Galactic Republic, unfortunately. No wonder he speaks so highly of it, Mildred added. When did he acquire this power? Jeff asked. No one knows, Zarkon remarked. We just know that he has a too powerful mind to suppress. He is in charge, and if you disobey him, then you suffer the consequences. We'll worry about him when the time comes, Jeff said. We have to try, at least. Can you get the guard to deactivate the force field? You like to live dangerously, don't you, human? Zarkon asked. Can you get them to open the door, he repeated. Yes, but we'll be captured the minute we get to the spaceship, if not before, Zarkon said, doubtful, as the guards turned their heads towards the four of them. Can you keep Riona occupied until we can make it to the ship? Jeff asked. I can try, but he'll probably kill me and come after you anyway. He is extremely powerful, and I am extremely persistent, Jeff remarked. We have to give it a, a try, at least. We're going to die anyway, and I, for one, am not looking forward to being executed. The force field was deactivated, and Riona entered the room, aware of this whole, aware of their whole attempt at a plan. I underestimated you, Mr. Walker, he announced. You're much more challenging than I expected. It won't happen again, I assure you. If you, if you know what I'm thinking, then you know I'm telling the truth about Mars, Jeff said. Riona walked over to him, his face just inches from his own. I know that, he whispered, raising his right index nail to his Jeff's throat and narrowing his evil red eyes. As you may know by now, I'm not all that I appear to be. Being the leader of the Galactic Republic has given me certain advantages, including executing anyone I see fit. No one can defy my powers. I just thought that you w wouldn't catch on to me so quickly. Justice must be served, my foolish friend, and your primitive human brain is no match for mine. I've arranged a presentation for you and my dear old friend Zarkon, and I hope you enjoy it. Guards, take them to the viewing room. What are you up to? Jeff asked as he stepped forward, only to be intercepted by the two of the guards. Riona then turned to Zarkon. 
trying to test my mind, Zarkon? He laughed. Shame on you. Test this. He waved his hand, which lifted Zarkon into the air and threw him against the far wall, bumping his head and rendering him unconscious. Dormiton stepped in, only to be stopped by Mildred. The guards picked up Zarkon from the floor and dragged him from the room. Riona pointed the laser at the others. Let's go, he snapped as he backed up against the wall, keeping his distance, and then led them down the hallway to the briefing room. Jeff couldn't quite understand why someone using telekinesis insisted on using a laser, but surmised perhaps he only had limited power over what he could do with his mind. Your friend Zarkon will be fine, Riona said, as he read Jeff's mind. He wanted to do something, but with the council leader's extraordinary abilities, he found it difficult to escape. They were guided into the viewing room and instructed to sit down as Zarkon began to come out of his daze. There was a large screen in the, in the center, as well as a computer panel. I know that our friend Zarkon here gave away classified information to you, Mr. Walker. It makes no difference that his intentions were harmless. I have no way of knowing who you are who you say you are. I'm sorry. I have no way of knowing you are who you say you are. Spies have come before me before. Yeah. Spies have come before me trying to block my thought patterns unsuccessfully. You have all committed treason. What is the sentence for treason, Zarkon? He raised his head still somewhat dazed but aware of what was happening. Death, he said. That is correct, my friend. Riona jeered and pressed some buttons on the panel. There are billions and billions of stars in this galaxy, in this universe, as well as your own. We can destroy any planet that orbits them just by pushing a series of coordinates. The Galactic Republic is trying to negotiate peaceful and profitable coexistence with most planets regardless of their interests, with or without hostile factions. However, we cannot condone a society of humans who insists on aiding our enemies. Now I have two choices. I can either destroy Zaloria, which will surely start an unavoidable war with the Tolarians, or I can destroy your puny little red planet, Mr. Walker. What is it going to be? What do you want from me? Jeff asked, puzzled. The truth, Mr. Walker, the truth. He sneered with an evil grin. Jeff tried to keep his mind off the location of Mars base the best he could, but found it extremely difficult. Riona approached him and pressed his laser against his temple. Try to defy me and I'll blow your head off. Jeff didn't want to see any planet destroyed, but he also didn't want to see his race obliterated either, assuming that the Tolarians hadn't retaliated and destroyed it already. Why did Balter and Riona have such interest in where Mars was anyways? His only alternative was to bluff him. Just to show you how human I am, he joked, you can go ahead and destroy my planet. Riona smiled as he anticipated his behavior. No, I don't think so, he said. The Republic has had just about enough of Zaloria, so I choose Zaloria. Goodbye, traitors. He entered the proper coordinates for the planet and a bluish green world appeared on the viewing screen. He pressed a button on the panel, which activated the death ray at the, at the helpless planet. They watched in anguish as the world exploded in just a matter of minutes, sending fragments across space in the viewing screen. Over 50 million lives were lost instantly. The Tolarians probably would find out about it if they hadn't already, as Zarkon was telling the truth about Riona's powers and the capabilities of this new weapon, they'd better be prepared to meet their match in any universe. And that's it for tonight. That's chapter three. And um, here's the question again. What is the weapon called that Zarkon reveals to Jeff? What's the name of it? So that's tonight's question. You can put it down in the comments below. And... Um, so, 
We'll be seeing you soon at the Comic Cons in the spring. There'll be many of them. And they're kind of going to be all over. So we'll, we'll talk to you next week with the next edition of uh, the readings. Okay. Till then, bye for now. <laughs>